Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today is Wednesday. Uh, this is Lunchtime with the Lord. And if you're tuning in for the very first time, thank you for uh, stopping and watching this video. Uh, these are daily devotions, Monday through Friday. And uh, we currently uh, have a study that we started on Monday uh, through the book of 2 Thessalonians. And so uh, this is just the third installment. So if this is your first time watching, uh, if you've only missed uh, two other videos, and you can catch up very easily uh, on this Facebook page if you're watching on Facebook or on you our YouTube page if you're watching there. And uh, we invite you to watch those uh, videos, and you'll be caught up uh, through uh, today. And uh, today being Wednesday, this is midweek, um, uh, the midweek point. Uh, this is our midweek service day, the day that we have our Bible uh, study and prayer meeting here at our church. And so we invite folks to be uh, in church this evening at 7 o'clock. If you do not, do not have a home church, uh, we invite you to come and uh, try out First Baptist Church here in Eleanor. And uh, we hope to see you tonight. Uh, but let's get to our study. Uh, so far in, on Monday and Tuesday, we've, we've been uh, going through the opening verses. And uh, those verses, of course, were just the greeting. Uh, we found that the Apostle Paul, of course, was the writer, the human writer, of the church uh, to the church at Thessalonica, and uh, we've seen some things uh, in the opening address in the first couple of verses. But in verse number three, we in continuing in this greeting, this opening, uh, Paul uh, begins to thank the Lord for some things uh, concerning this church at Thessalonica, some attributes, some characteristics of this church, some uh, some things that he's commending them commending them for, uh, beginning in verse number three. And uh, there's two of them that I want to call your attention to from that verse, verse number three today, that Paul thanks the Lord for. Notice what it says in verse three. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, uh, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Two things that Paul was thankful for concerning this church at Thessalonica. The first thing had involved their faith. He said their faith groweth exceedingly. They were growing in faith. Now, normally when we think about church growth, we think about numerical growth. And I, and I believe that's very important. I believe there's a place for that because every number uh, uh, represents a soul. And so true church growth is not just new people coming to the church from other churches, but really, uh, really, when you get boil it all down, true church growth is when a lively stone is added to the building. In other words, someone gets saved. They were dead in trespasses and sin. God quickened and made them alive. Uh, they got saved. They got born again. They were added to the church. And, and so numeric, numerical growth is very important. And normally when we think about church growth, that's where our mind goes. We want to know what, how many people there were there, uh, how many people um, attended, how many how many folks were saved, and all that is great. And and there's a place for all that. It's very important, especially when we talk about people getting saved. Uh, but there's another aspect to church growth that Paul mentions here that he was thankful for. He said that he was thankful for their faith uh, because their faith was growing exceedingly. They were growing in their faith. The truth is this, believer, when you got saved, that was not the end, that was the beginning. There's a new life in Christ. This relationship that you have with the Lord Jesus Christ began, of course, when you got saved, uh, but that was not the end, that was the beginning. We're to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, we're to grow in our faith, we're to mature in the Lord, we're, we're to get past the point of of always needing this sincere milk of the word, but get to the point where we can handle strong meat from God's word. Here was a church that um, wasn't just growing uh, numerically, but they were growing in their faith. They were maturing together as they walked with the Lord, as they worked together, as they served together. It was a church that grew in their faith. That's very important. Uh, the truth is, Christian, we, we've, we've not arrived. No matter how long you've, you've lived for the Lord, no matter how long you've been saved, there's always room for us to grow. We shouldn't be satisfied and complacent where we are in our walk with the Lord. We should tr strive to grow. 
that was strive to get closer to the Lord. And here was a church that was growing in their faith. And Paul thanked the Lord for it. Paul was praising God for this attribute. And as a pastor of a church, that's a, that's a great desire of mine. Not only we grow numerically, but also we as a body of believers would grow in our faith. That as the years go, as we serve the Lord together, as the years go, that we we, we don't stay the same. We, we're, we're being conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. And so we're, we're not perfect yet, but we're not what we were because God is molding us and we're growing in our faith. The second thing that he praised the Lord for was this. Uh, their charity of every one of you, so all of them had charity or love, and he said that love was to toward each other, and it abounded, it aboundeth. So Paul's saying this love that aboundeth, it was every one of them had it, it was toward each other, this brotherly love in the body of, of believers. And so Paul thanked the Lord for their growing faith, but he also thanked the Lord for their abounding love to one to another. Why is it important for a body of believers, Christians, to love one another? Well, uh, John, I have it written over here, John chapter 13, verse 35, Jesus said this, all men will know that you are my, my disciples because you have love for one another. And so people uh, know that you are a Christian one way is because you have love for each other. And then in, in John wrote about that love as well in 1 John, the book, the epistle of 1 John. 1 John chapter 3 verse 14 tells us that it gives evidence uh, in, to ourselves that we're saved. Let me just find that verse of scripture so I can read it to you. Uh, 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 14, uh, the Bible tells us, um, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brethren abideth in death. And so that verse tells us that because we have love for one another, it helps to provide evidence, assurance, uh, that we truly are born again, that we truly are saved. And then in verse uh, chapter 4, verse number 20, Jesus said, that, I'm sorry, John said this, if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? John says it's impossible to love God and hate your brother and not love your brother. Uh, and so uh, Paul was looking at a, a body of believers, and there were some things that, he can, that they could be commended for. There were some things that, that Paul could praise God for, and one was because their faith was growing, and the second one was because their love was abounding. They were a loving body of believers. Now, here's the twofold challenge. These two things should be present in my life and in your life. It doesn't matter what church you belong to. It doesn't matter what body of believers that you belong to. Uh, these two things should be present in your life. You say, well, I'm not a part of the church at Thessalonica, nor am I, uh, but we are part of the body of Christ. We should be a member of a local assembly, a, a body of believers, a church, and, and be faithfully attending. But these two things should be in my life. These two things should be in your life. We should be growing in our faith, and we should be loving one another uh, as, as a body of believers, brothers and sisters in Christ. And Paul praised God for these two things were, that were found in this local assembly. And oh, uh, what a desire for, for Christians. What a desire for each, each of us to have. A desire to have a, a church that's growing in faith and loving one another. And uh, if we can't love our brothers, John said, our family, uh, a family of God, then how are we loving God that we, that we, haven't, we haven't seen? As John said, it's impossible. And so the twofold challenge, are you growing in your faith? Are you growing in your faith? Uh, are you the same that you were, uh, same uh, uh, as you was last year, the year before? Has there any, been any growth? And how's your love for the family of God? Uh, how's your desire to be around the family of God? Uh, the Bible tells us in, uh, of course, Hebrews chapter 10, uh, that we are not to forsake the assembling ourselves together as a man or some is, but so much of the, so, the more as you see the day approaching. And there, there was a verse, in that, part of that verse that says, exhorting one another, that encouragement that we get being around the family of God. And so twofold question, are you growing in your faith? Are you maturing in the Lord? And the second part is that, do you have a desire? Do you have a desire to have fellowship 
with your brothers and sisters in Christ. The Bible tells us we're to love them. And uh, that love shows up in actions. It doesn't just say I love you, but it shows up in certain ways. We pray for them, of course. We encourage them. And then it also, who we love, we have a desire to be with. And so my question is, uh, how's your faith? How's your love for the brethren? Hey, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. I hope to see you tonight, 7 o'clock. And uh, once again, we always ask you to do this. Would you comment on this video? Let us know who's watching. Uh, also, like the video and share it. Uh, if you're on the Facebook page, you can share it to your wall. We'll reach more people this way. And we want this study to grow and reach as many folks as we can with the Word of God as we journey through the book of Second Thessalonians. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow at the same time on Thursday's edition of Lunchtime with the Lord. God bless you.